Okay, I'm going to um, walk through the full draft example for uh, the scene design assignment for paper four. So I did this with a meeting of other students, but I forgot to record it. So this is the example that you have in um, Canvas. Uh, so it's set up in MLA format. Um, I've color coded some things just to make them stand out and I've created the sidebar to explain separate portions. So make sure you've got the right date um, and your own title. So design for the pharmacy scene in A Rose for Emily is my title and that is my the sound you hear back there is my bird clock that's running out of battery so it sounds terrible so you provide your own title not the title of the work you're writing about but I've included it here and it's a short story so it's in quotation marks I mentioned the author William Faulkner um, and what he did the context of this story um, that was first published in 1930 you're going to say when it was published um, and the significance of the story I mentioned um, and what Faulkner achieved with it um, possibly uh, what the author intended you could certainly do that with Animal Farm include what was intended why it was um, written for Sir Gawain um, that was written as a chival chivalric romance. So you want to mention the genre and the purpose at the time, um, if possible. Um, so, and why I would create this one, I justified designing this by saying I have not found a version that um, depicts her as a sympathetic character. So the summary of the story highlights the narrative arc. We've gone through and talked about the narrative arc. You have that somewhere. Maybe I should, I'll um, provide you a um, diagram of that. Uh, making a note now. Okay, so it's in the narrative arc, you start with the exposition or backstory which comes in the beginning, somewhere in the beginning of the, the story. And um, in this example, it uh, we get the town's attitude as the exposition. They scrutinize her throughout her life. So I, I um, have bold-faced the um, parts of my summary that correlate with the narrative arc. So um, the point of view is the town, they scrutinize her and um, uh, you get information about her backstory, her backstory, but we're really seeing their perspective. So the inciting event is where everything changes. So in each story in um, Sweat, the inciting event is uh, Sykes coming in with the whip and um, Delia freaks out and she finally stands up to him. So that's the first time she stands up to them, him and from there on all the action happens proceeding from that action. So that's the inciting event or incident. Um, so after that there's going to be an obstacle, something that raises the tension and I explain what that is in this story. So in um, A Rose for Emily, um, it's, I'm sorry, in Sweat, it would be, we find out things about um, Sykes and we also see Emily, uh, sorry, Delia, go ride by the store and we find out, find out that the, the town doesn't help her at all. The men of the town don't stand up to Sykes and that's why he can get away with the abuse that he gets away with and he's going to push it. Um, so um, there's an obstacle, a midpoint in the story where things change and um, in mine um, this scene that I'm, I'm 
designing is the midpoint. So where does everything change? Um, then there's another obstacle and the climax of this story um, is when you see the crisis happening and everything's got to dissolve from there. So there's no going back. Something is going to permanently change and the denouement or outcome is the end and the final revelation of the fate of the main character or the revelation of what the story is about. And I'm thinking of Jonah, that the denouement is God confronting Jonah um, with his purpose for the story. Why can't I have mercy and feel pity for this city of thousands and their cattle um, when you feel pity just for a plant. So that's the denouement. Okay, so this is the summary. So context is here, summary is here, and the message. Okay, now that's the theme, motif, or idea that I want to convey. Now I am going to justify or support my reading or understanding my theme, idea, or motif with a statement from um, an authoritative source. So my statement is that A Rose for Emily illustrates the collective control of the individual minds and morals in this small town, a microcosm of society. The story has been described as, and I provide a quotation from a source that is in the reference I got through a simple reference check um, through the library. That's an authoritative reading of an overview of Faulkner's work. And the story has been described as filtered through the narrative consciousness of a townsperson because it is not Emily Grierson's actions that the story is finally about, but the limited understanding of the town in which she lives and the society to which she belongs that causes her to commit the actions she does, however bizarre they may seem. And um, my, okay, I need to um, insert the uh, citation there, and it was there. And this should be a double quotation mark. So you see, that's a mistake that's easy to make. So this is my source. This is the quote. There's no page number. And that corresponds to the listing in the works cited. So here I explain that um, I want to show Emily as a more sympathetic person and um, character and that I'm doing a more feminist reading that um, shows that she didn't have many options with the way the town and the society thought of her as a single woman. Um, so design, the director's notes. All right, so you're going to place the, the scene you're writing about um, and in where it is in the story what you want to achieve this film should inspire the audience with awe at emily's audacity create fear for homer and elicit sympathy for the pharmacist so what should the audience come away with what should this sh scene show the scene should show emily's passion her lover's nonchalance about her reputation of both the townspeople judgment and and awe of her as the last grierson so what is your um what are you wanting to um, create in your audience's mind? This is a good place to show who you expect your audience to be. Did I do that here? No, I didn't. Um, I aim to reach a, an educated audience aware of Faulkner's reputation though they might not have read the Nobel Prize
today's winning author previously. Okay, so an educated audience, but people maybe who are exposed, they know his name, and they know there's something to do with the Old South. Okay, so what do you want the audience to feel, experience, what should the takeaways be? And um, I chose to start with the setting and mention how filming with, will look in these first two paragraphs. Um, and my format got messed up. Um, I'm going to try to... <laughs> okay, that should work. Now, so the scene, where, where am I filming it? What will the audience see? Um, I'd like to put in pictures, but I didn't find any at the time. Remember, this is a draft. The film will be simple, dark, and in muted tones. So that's the style, which will convey, and my audience is Netflix or Prime Video, who have, their algorithm has identified the audience as people who like to watch serious more serious films. Um, a thoughtful take on a classic work. Um, I want to bring it to life for viewers who've gotten used to feminist takes on culture but who do not realize how challenging it was to live in this culture and not adopt its standards. So um, what sh how should they see Emily and we want them to come away with a sympathetic view of women who seemed to support or um, voluntarily remain in the patriarchal culture, but this will help them realize how difficult all of that was. So the actors, um, I found pictures in different places. This picture came from IMDb and I cite it. It's the sources in my work cited and I've cast and the past tense of cast is cast. I've chosen three actors, so the one I chose for, for Miss Emily is Jennifer Lawrence, who plays independent characters. Um, now, here in the red, I quote a description from the story, from that part of her life. So you are looking for evidence in the story to support your choice. It's not Jennifer Lawrence is a good actor. She plays independent people. I want to provide evidence that Miss Emily is an independent person and more than an independent person. She's eccentric and ultimately she murders her lover. Um, and there's something about her eyes. Um, here, uh, the flesh of which was strained across the temples and about the eye sockets, as you would imagine a lighthouse keeper's face ought to look, someone who's always looking for something. And then um, I explain Lawrence and how she looks, and I believe Lawrence's signature glare would serve the character better than physical size. So uh, I tie her ability to look intense through her eyes with the character of Miss Emily as she's described. Um, I selected Army Hammer to play Homer Barron, who is just in the very beginning of this of the scene where he exits her house. Um, Homer is described as a big, dark, ready man with a big voice and li eyes lighter than his face. If Army Hammer had sun-darkened skin and darker hair, he would fit that description. In each of the roles, Hammer plays a role demanding physical agility and an imposing on-screen appearance. So he's 6'5", very athletic looking, and um, can play this nonchalant character. Then, I, and so I got this picture from biography. Um, you can use Instagram, find your star's Instagram account and use a um, picture and cite the Instagram account as long as it's 
the photo belongs to the star, you can um, go to this one um, comes from, I think, NBC for Walton Goggins. Um, and uh, I justified, there's no description of the pharmacist in the story, but we see his action and we know that he refuses to give the poison to Miss Emily himself. And um, because of Goggin's intensity, he can bring a touch of dark humor by showing him as nervous when he's um, facing Miss Emily and kind of sweating bullets. So you don't have to cast even more than one person if you're doing Jonah for example maybe you you're doing a scene of him by himself so you're casting Jonah if you're casting God as well or God's voice or if you if God appears or if you hear God's voice you might you need to think about him and I would say there are other there are actors other than Morgan Freeman who can play God so Morgan Freeman keeps popping up as a choice because he's pretty amazing, but you can find others too. Um, so scene design. So in this section, I walk you through the scene. Um, how it opens is in green. What you see when it opens, no one's on the street. I point out sounds, what the sounds are. Then a shot shows Emily closer up. Um, and then where we hear music as um, you see Homer stride off, the music suggests the mood and the attitude and foreshadows that Emily's about to do something really dark. Um, so indicate if the sh set shifts from one place to another during your scene. The next scene opens with a shot of, the, of a, a just an anonymous mother and a daughter in the pharmacy. So they're standing by witnessing what happens when Miss Emily comes into the drugstore. Now I've got, I started highlighting the sound stuff. No other sound than murmuring to each other is heard until the bell of the shop rings and we see them stand in full sunlight from the front windows, a dark sil figure is silhouetted in the doorway. So in the green, I'm explaining what happens with the light and her, um, Emily's costume is a long darkish dress. The tone of the next action suggests tension. So this is a place where the tension is rising and um, the Emily goes up to the druggist or the pharmacist and um, I described the encounter here, how she faces him down, and here's a, I, I'm quoting dialogue from the story here. So if you quote dialogue um, of more than, of four lines or more, you need to create a block quotation. So what the camera shows is Emily's back and reactions. So we see over her shoulder the reactions of the druggist. Um, and uh, his response to her, um, the woman and her grown dog, daughter, Emily, stares down. It's important that there are witnesses to this scene because the story is told from the point of view of the town. The man knows who she is, but maintains his own dig dignity while, um, oh, the man who knows who she is is an African-American um, helper of the druggist, who the druggist makes him give her the poison. And of course he does that with dignity and looks at her. Um, then without any music or dialogue, she walks out. So here's my section on costumes, music, and lighting. I've always already mentioned some of these, the music and lighting as I explain this scene. And here are the costumes. I might include pictures, especially if I were doing a PowerPoint. Um, when Emily gives a goodbye kiss to Homer, there will be no music, and then, but there are birds singing, and then faint dark music will begin when he walks down. So I've pointed out 
all these specifics and up here I've explained how the scene works and the only dialogue is this right here that's it that's all I've got the rest is you see and hear so this is the way a paper would work now for your paper everyone will write this portion of the paper the introduction with the context the summary and the message then for the scene design you can do a powerpoint if you wish you can break it down into sections like i have this director's notes what's the purpose of the scene which scene you're doing you could do a slide with that so on your slides you can have pictures um, you can have bullet points if you have quotations that you're going to include they should be on put them on the screen you can copy and paste them from the from the text and cite them right so uh, you can I if I were doing this um, I would do uh, my head for the slide would be director's notes um, intentions maybe and I would do bullet points um, awe at Emily's fear for audacity fear for Homer sympathy for the pharmacist and that would be what I want the audience to feel um, and then I would explain this um, and then I would do set and style I would probably have a slide with audience um, audience and then say this would be a Netflix or Prime video um, and what I intend for that so the set um, I would uh, probably have a slide that would have a picture of where this takes place and, or maybe Faulkner and explain this is a take on um, Faulkner. Um, readers should feel critical of, em empath of Emily and sympathetic to her, to her at the same time. So I'd wrap up the audience with that. Then actors and I would have a slide, at least one slide for each actor. And um, one thing I should mention is that in PowerPoint, if you click on insert pictures, you should either see and and you need to do this on the desktop app for PowerPoint. Um, pick insert pictures and um, you might see you'll see online picture like from the from the device or the computer or um, or file or from online pictures and you can click on online pictures now you might get something that says search Bing if you search Bing you might be able to find up find photos um, and I found one for Jennifer Lawrence that is licensed through Creative Commons and it will pop up with the little text box under the photo if you're in PowerPoint doing this and you get that Bing suggestion so you will not have to cite those photos if you use those so for your main characters find some place in your text that explains who they are what they look like or in the case of someone like Jonah um, you don't know what he looks like but you find information about what a prophet might look like and what they might wear what their position is in ancient Hebrew society um, and choose an actor who can convey the character you are trying to portray in Jonah so actors so for scene design do that same thing if you're doing PowerPoint 
um, look for an online picture and I would look for a structure like an old um, an antebellum house where the scene would start and then an antebellum building where the druggist is um, then um, you can provide and insert music if you want to you don't have to though if it's really important that would be fine um, now if you're doing a stage a set um, in a stage version you can draw simple um, blocking simple diagrams for blocking where the characters go when and put those in here um, I didn't think that would be helpful for me with a film I could have done storyboarding for this scene and that would have been useful I could do that if I were doing and I might very likely do that if I were doing a PowerPoint for this include any of the dialogue from the the text that's relevant that you would want to be in your performance um, description passages that explain things include cite those if you're filming what does the camera show um, what explain what the actors do explain where the music comes in or dialogue or sound effects costumes music and lighting so you can show these in a PowerPoint with you could have um, a slide or more slides with examples of costumes that you find online um, anything that you get from a website you need to cite so this is the end of mine and I'll show you my work cited so I have not formatted it completely I've included the right punctuation and the right information um, this it needs editing but you're going to cite the original work and this is where I got the text for a rose for Emily make sure you cite the original work and and where you read it um, this is the Arthur Kinney wrote the entry on William Faulkner that I cited when I um, cited the reading and and the commentary about the story um, and that's a good place to this is I found this through credo reference um, I got the picture of Jennifer Lawrence from um, who's who in America and if I did this now and that was through credo reference um, if I did this now I would probably do a um, PowerPoint and use PowerPoint for finding sources so you're going to use your work cited if you insert pictures that you cite you're going to put a little text box with the very first thing in the citation um, and so you see that's the title and um, of the photo okay I'm going to write up some more things and put them in an announcement and I hope those things will help you. Thanks.